Okay, we want to look at some of the results we've gotten from Gemative ERT IP 16. Gemative has uh, proved to be very um, efficient in delineation of some sulfide mineralization within uh, the lower Bene trough. We've used this equipment to to detect some sulfide mineralizations, and this is uh, actually also confirmed through some of the target drillings we are trying to to use. This equipment we've used for over a year now has continued to prove um, some good results. Let's um, look at some of the applications where this has actually proved very good. Um, in terms of mineral prospecting, which is resource prospecting, uh, this is very good. You can use this system um, to do that. Secondly, if you're into environmental studies, you can also deploy this system. Depends on actually what the configuration you are looking at. You can deploy them in surface um, delineation of soil uh, contaminations and all that. Also, if you are looking at a fracture system and structural delineations, you can use this system that will be very, very good. Which we can see in some of our results, we are going to show you. Again, in geological mapping, you can use it to map geological formations and all that. That's very good in underground water detection where you have some complex issues that you require uh, a two dimensional view or three dimensional view of rock, aquif of rock formation and aquifer formations or aquifer systems, you can deploy this system very, very efficiently to map out the underground water. Then also in geotechnicals or foundation studies, this is very, very okay. Most people want to use 3D in delineating the kind of the rock beneath where they want to put some huge structures. This is very good. Then in target drilling, which we've used this also, and prove very good this can also be used in precisely targeting a location when you've done some different kind of mapping whether you've used gravity whether you've used magnetic whether you have used seismic or some other methods but this is very good in de detecting or delineating the best zones for infield or vein minerals another one is in cave detection you can actually use these you know, based on the principles of resistivity, we've used this. You can use this to detect caves, though in this part of the country, but not much in the two digs, but in some other parts, this has actually shown a very good result. Then in when you're working, whether some people will ask, is it really good to use in non-metals and all that? Yeah, definitely. This gives a very good and precise anomalies when you come to detecting metals and some met uh, non-metals in the field so i think these are some of the applications where these have proved very good so far so i think uh, gd20 gd10 is a very good um, a system for one you're looking for a solution of uh, geophysics so let's look at some of the principles we've used in detecting and you know, actually deployed major principles of geology which we used in in some of the things we've done uh, in this place what we've tried to understand geologically is first of all understand the structural um, and delineation the structural system the trending and all that how it goes how the cuts are crocs and all that so we've tried to use that as the first one then Secondly, we've tried to look at um, the regional structure that is associated with the trough. We know that the regional structures mostly in this trough are stratigraphically controlled. So you have to understand when they are stratigraphically controlled and when they are locally controlled based on your interpretation. So having these two principles, we'll be able to say, okay, these are the kind of structures we are looking for in terms of this direction and in terms of that direction. So it's very, very important. Geology is the basics um, of interpretation. Then secondly, we've actually known that disseminated minerals, most of the time in the sedimentary cessations, exhibit high chargeabilities and high resistivity. 
or high turbidity and low resistivity. All this depends on the degree of saturations or fracture system that are actually involved in where we are working. Also, you need to understand that what we're looking for is vein system kind of mineralization. So in the fracture field, so if it's a fracture field, it might be vertically, some are vertically narrow and are deep in body as in this trough. So having put these four basics together, you'll be able to look at your sections, you'll be able to look at your section and tell what image you are looking at after you've done your model. So you can't just go on doing models without applying some of the so even if you are applying any filter you have to have it at the back of your mind that this geology must be in place so looking at that you see this is the kind of the first result we got in this section at this particular place you can see they were able to delineate a very clear fracture zone which also coincide with um, a very interesting Tangibility at this point. So, look at this also. We also detected something uh, break here and also at this place. And this also, why is this actually very important? Is because this is important because it's when we are talking about fracture field mineralization, we are looking for fractures. So, so based on the mineralization we've actually observed and seen through other methods there will be able to um, tag these possible sandstones and barite passage within this uh, section. So look at another result, another section is this. So this is a likely um, uh, infield body that is coinciding with the resistive body. This also is a place that has been drilled. So we'll be able to see at this particular place we've got some reasonable um, result through coring, which will show you what we got from this location. So you can see this is actually well fitted. There's no noise here. This is a very clear indication of, of anomaly actually coinciding with the high resistive body in this location. Then look at another section here. This narrow dipping structures with a high chisability. Um, this is another interesting um, section which we actually try to put drilling across. So we'll go to the field and see what the site geologics sent across to us based on this result. So I think um, let's look at that video from the field. Then from there, we can uh, bring you some subsequent results from different sections but for now we think that um, the geomotive um, system is actually good and looks very very good in detection of for some sulfide mineralization if well actually interpreted so so many things actually also involved not just only on equipment but in terms of understanding the geology and the modeling methodology also but this at least shows us that the equipment is very good in terms of working with it. So let's look at that video. Cantering um, chacopanrite like material. Okay, can we can we be able to see a sample of it? Um, Isaac, can you come and help a bit? Shells and sandstone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where is the 
um, what's that one? That one is looking a bit, um, that one there. Your general impression of here, what would you say? Are you excited? Yes, sir. Are you happy? Yes, very, very happy. Are you sure you are not disappointed? Yes, sir. Your face is not smiling. So it looks like a disappointed face. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Have, uh, this it's what? It's promising. promising. Yes, sir. And when that comes from you, I'm, I think I have to believe you. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is the depth you are going on this? Where are you going? Why are you planning to terminate? For five meters. So you still have another twenty meters to go. So what is coming out now? What is the depth? Is it five meters? Three meters. Today. Okay. Okay, this will take you to 28 meters. Right. Okay. So you are 25 there. Was that 28? Okay, very good. All right. Well done.